Hi, I've been down with a bad cold, so I'm pushing out this super interesting episode on True Caller today that we published a few months ago. With nearly 1500 crore rupees lost to digital fraud in the financial year 2024, True Caller, the Swedish call screening app, has emerged looking like the savior of the moment. The government's Telecom Regulatory Authority of India on the other hand is lagging behind with its True Caller like service. So, can it do what True Caller has done? Stay tuned to find out. Drashti Singh is a Mumbai-based lawyer who has a 12-year-old son. In May this year, she got a phone call from a stranger, a man, saying that her son was in an accident. The man told her that he was taking her son to the hospital and that he would need 30,000 rupees immediately. Now, I know in your mind you're immediately thinking, well, this sounds like a scam. But if you put yourself in Drashti's shoes, it is her son we're talking about. What if it were true? Every minute counts, right? It's a matter of life and death. So she transferred the money and rushed to her son's school. He was, as you may have expected by now, perfectly fine. She tried to call that number many, many times, but it was already switched off. So she went ahead and did the next logical thing. She lodged a police complaint, and the next step, report it to the telecom authority or try, right? But that's not what Drashti did, nor did any of the other tele scam victims that we spoke to. In fact, they seem pretty clueless about going to try for telecom frauds. But they all knew True Caller, the Swedish call ID app. So they reported all these numbers to True Caller and not Try. So True Caller seems to be basically stepping in to do what Try should be doing, right? But of course, it is also taking full advantage of this. It is using this opportunity to make money from both users and other businesses. Also, very important to note here is that while True Caller may be looking like the hero in this situation, it is a private company after all. And its success in India is also built partially on how inadequate privacy laws are here. The company has been accused of breaching data privacy norms in India. So, what is the government up to with nearly 1500 crore rupees being lost to digital frauds in the financial year 2021 the government is finally scrambling to catch up the new government's first 100 day plan includes enabling try to tackle spam and scam calls but can try match up to true caller welcome to daybreak a business podcast from the ken i'm your host nikta sharma and i don't chase the news cycle Instead, every day of the week, my colleague Rahil Philippos and I will come to you with one business story that is worth understanding and worth your time. Today is Monday, the eighth of July. A country that boasts of its digital public goods infrastructure like Aadhaar and UPI, it is amazing how telecom has been so ignored. So much so that a foreign private company is doing its job. So, what does True Caller really do? It's quite simple. It gives users the power of choice. They can decide which calls they want to take. And with the deluge of scam and spam calls that we receive, this is essential now. So True Caller has become a user's constant companion that allows them the option to block such numbers and also mark them as fraud and spam. The company uses a crowdsourced data model to mark phone numbers as spam. My colleague Rona Kumar Gunjan spoke to two former True Caller executives. They said that they did not know exactly how many such markings were required for the company to push a phone number into the spam basket, but one of them did say that it varies according to the type of scam. True Caller is basically offering welfare as a service. It offers a premium subscription starting at one hundred and thirty-two rupees, and with it, you get features like zero ads, call recording, and a lot more. In the March twenty twenty-four quarter. True Caller generated over one million US dollars in monthly revenue from its nearly two million premium subscribers in India. This is a twenty percent increase in average revenue per premium user in India compared to the same period last year. But there is a flip side to this. 
Stay tuned to find out. So, when a retail user reports annoying calls, businesses trying to reach a customer to deliver items or to inform them about a bill's due date to face rejection. Truecaller saw an opportunity here to make itself another revenue stream, an enterprise division. So businesses like lenders, e-commerce companies and telcos that use call centers want to partner with Truecaller to make sure their calls are taken. Industry executives say that a verified tag lets businesses identify themselves to people as legitimate organizations. Take for example Perfect Finance. It is a South Delhi based non-bank that mostly deals with two-wheeler and three-wheeler financing. The small size lender wanted to focus on a higher income group and target customers of more expensive second-hand two-wheelers. An executive there told us that the first hurdle was in reaching out to potential customers. Initial calls were answered but soon call rejection rates soared. New leads dried up and there was no progress towards breaching a new income group. It was only a couple of months later that the company's sales executives found out that true caller users had marked their phone numbers as spam. So to undo the impact of true caller users, the lender now wants to tie up with true caller's enterprise division. The former true caller executive said to us that true caller carries out an internal seven-step process before granting the verified tag. On average, the tag easily improves call pickup rates by 30% and some companies even report a 50% rise. The verified tag also has another advantage for enterprises that not many know about. The number of spam markings that are required to push a verified enterprise's phone number in the red is much higher than what is needed for an unverified one. But the executive said even then, if the business attracts spam or fraud markings, then it is pushed into the red. Once a number is declared as spam or fraud, on true caller, it cannot be undone. The company does not delist numbers from the spam category in exchange of money. Because that would kill the purpose of true caller itself. So you see, in a situation where retail users cannot stand spam calls, and businesses on the other hand want to reach out to more customers, true caller is gaining the most. Meanwhile, Try is still figuring out how to step in. And what makes Try different from Truecaller is that its end goal is consumer protection and not profit. But telcos are not very happy with Try's proposal. Stay tuned to find out why. So Try is now pushing for the quick implementation of something called the Calling Name Presentation Service or SNAP which has actually been in the works since 2022. But before I tell you what it is, just a quick reminder, India has the world's second largest telecom network with 1.2 billion subscribers. Snap is basically the government's version of a caller ID function, quite similar to Truecaller, but for free. This month, telecom operators like Bharti Airtel, Vodafone Idea and Reliance Geo launched trial sessions across states such as Maharashtra and Haryana. Now, Try wants to zero in on a launch date for Snap and it also wants to make it compulsory for all. And this is what is bothering the big telcos. So the plan for the telecom operators is to help share a caller's identity with the receiver and give them the right to make an informed choice about receiving calls. Now, unlike Truecaller's crowdsource model, telcos will be using the KYC or Know Your Customer data of users shared during SIM card registrations. A Vodafone executive told us that this addresses the issue of wrong names popping up on the phone screen, which often happens with Truecaller. But the concern here is privacy. They said, and I'm quoting, if the proposal is implemented, it will become compulsory for all. Where is consent? There needs to be an opt-in service. Not everybody wants to share their identity with others. End quote. In the case of Truecaller, people have that choice to download the app or stay away from it. Try to needs to come up with such an option. But in either case, it is a lose-lose for the end user because they will have to part with their data irrespective of whichever service they opt in for. A senior Airtel executive said that telcos had opposed the umbrella launch of the service. They had even proposed to restrict the feature only for commercial calls, that is, a receiver should know which company is calling them, 
much like true color for business but now with the snap plan the responsibility has transferred from try to telcos it has asked them to specifically cater to consumer complaints related to spam calls by creating a dedicated team if they don't have one already and also making their websites more user friendly so for now try seems to think that the best way to do this is to pass on the challenge of tackling true color to the telcos hang on because this episode is not over yet coming up next day break unwind hello and welcome back to another day break unwind segment we are so happy to be here like you know it is thursday and snigda and i are here to help you but more importantly to help each other figure out what to do over the weekend right uh, you know whether it's you're chilling at home reading a book or watching a movie or a tv show or you know even if you are up for it which i don't think i will be this weekend <laughs> stepping out to check out a cool new place in town whether it's a bookstore or a restaurant you know the reason sikda saying she's not feeling up to it is because i mean if you're in bangalore you know this uh the weather has been all over the place and both of us have taken turns to fall terribly terribly ill Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's a good thing that this week's theme uh, is conducive to staying indoors. <laughs> Our theme this week, and I have to admit, I'm very, very excited. I would go as far as saying that this week's theme is my favorite so far. Ooh, okay, okay. <laughs> We asked you to share your favorite coming of age films, books, TV shows, and can I just say? You guys did not disappoint. That is true. There are some really good recommendations that we have, and uh, some of them are, uh, you know, Rahil and mine, my personal favorites, and some of them are quite new. So that's a great mix. But before we get there, Rahil, what is? Why are we talking about coming of age? Okay, this is my favorite topic to talk about because coming of age, like as a genre. all these like films and movies and books just bring me so much joy okay it generally captures kind of like a period of transition right from youth yeah. to adulthood so all those big life changes and the thing that i really love about this genre is that more often than not it's capturing some really messy bits of life exactly yeah, you know yeah, yeah. you know how growing yeah. up is this really complicated beautiful but like very very messy experience right there are all those intricacies that sometimes are just so hard to put down in words and kind of describe for yourself that's true like you know it's always about you know i i really feel as i grow older maybe because i'm older now but i feel like we constantly have these coming of age uh, phases in our life you know it it doesn't have anything to do with age you know because self discovery and you know learning a certain kind of truth about your life it's like an ongoing process that goes on like you know that's actually too. very true right? that is a great point but yeah. sometimes like those things happen so internally and in such like imperceptible ways right it's really yeah. hard to kind of communicate them to other people but sometimes when you see it perfectly captured in like a film or a show or a book i don't know it just feels so special true that's so true yeah i mean for me you know it's so it's so funny that we're talking about this because you know the last two years for me have really been a very different kind of coming of age you know really so yeah Rahil, why don't you tell us? Why don't you um, start with okay. your recommendation? Okay, so my recommendation is this Netflix show that I very often turn on and watch, like when I'm feeling down. It's called Big Mouth. Uh, it's this animated series, and it's kind of centered around a bunch of teens that are hitting puberty. It is uh-huh. hilarious, but <laughs> okay. it is also really, really disgusting. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know, I said like some really great coming of age films and shows capture like the messy bits. Yeah, this captures the messiest, grossest bits. Can you okay. give me an example? Give us an example. So, okay, so. Basically like I said it's centered around a bunch of teens they're all hitting puberty around the same time and what happens is they all get assigned these individual hormone monsters no one addresses the fact that it's weird but it's there you everyone has their own hormone monsters and they're all like these invisible friends that they have and they mm-hmm. have a very big role to play in the whole show so they're okay. kind of guiding them through puberty but in real it's basically like a your hormone monster is a manifestation of 
puberty and the disgustingness of puberty <laughs> okay <laughs> there was such a great concept it's it's great if you've not yeah. watched it i would definitely recommend checking it out uh, it's a very specific kind of humor but it's a kind of humor that i enjoy mm-hmm. so yeah i'd love to know what you think stigda and you know what our listeners think also if you've checked it if you watched it or if you watch it you know over the weekend please write to us i love talking about big mouth but yeah just uh for a little more context there are seven seasons of the show and each season the cast grows a year older so you literally see them transition from like gross grubby teenagers to like slightly less grubby young adults uh and it's just it's f- great so much fun that's amazing i'm definitely going to check it out <laughs> Snigda I'm so excited to hear your recommendation this week. Okay so I have two one is a okay. book and um it's by, it's called The Lives of Girls and Women by this very famous uh Canadian writer called Alice Munro who actually just died uh this year I think yeah. in May. Mm-hmm. And uh she's of course brilliant you know I love short stories uh I love Alice Munro anybody who uh like short stories will definitely know Alice Munro but uh but this one is a novel the one that i'm recommending and uh, you know they often compare her to uh Anton Chekhov because wow. of the brilliance of her writing but again i i really don't like those kind of comparisons you know Alice Munro is Alice Munro and Chekhov is Chekhov you know um but okay getting to the book uh So I kind of I have very fond memories of you know reading it for the first time. I was I think in my early twenties, and that was also another coming of fa- uh, age phase <laughs> of my life, you know. And uh, somebody actually, it's so funny because it was my first visit to Bangalore, and it was my first visit to Blossoms, and someone wow. bought this book for me. and then i went back to delhi and i read it and uh, it's about a young teenage girl who's actually it's semi autobiographical so a lot of it is based on her own experience growing up in rural canada so this young girl she's growing up in rural ontario and her father's a fox farmer so oh, you know wow. she's grown up around uh, nature and wild and you know as you're reading the book you can kind of see how it's shaping her you know it's very very beautifully depicted and then she grow she's she's growing up with this very interesting set of people her father is a very unique character then her mother you know and this is early 40s right that we're talking about so like you know and it's a rural place you know everybody goes goes to church but then her mother is this outlier she does not she's an atheist and she believes in science and she uh, sells encyclopedias so she goes around everywhere selling encyclopedias and she takes her job very seriously um so it's very beautiful the mother daughter relationship the father daughter relationship and again her mother's my one of my favorite ca- characters in the book is her mother's best friend and oh. uh, i don't remember her name but she's this very different uh, you know among all the people who live in that area she kind of stands out because she's like really independent she's very open about her desires as a woman um and you know how all of these people kind of shape uh, this little girl and then she has her friends and there's also a small town scandal involved it's it's such a good book You know, I love she that. captures really you know she captures growing up as a girl as a like and you know turning into that woman and all these learnings that you have it's it's just so beautiful and your second recommendation is kind of linked to that too right yeah actually yeah it's it's you know you watch this movie rahil <laughs> i love it's, this movie it's a beautiful movie it's called lady bird and uh, it's by uh, directed by greta gerwig and um it's got so sharon and who does such a fab job right and it's about yeah growing up she she grows up in some where does she grow up right do you remember that uh philly no not in philly i i yeah. remember she was dreaming of moving to the big to exactly um, she wants new to york. go to new york yeah and she she's obviously not in new york but that's her dream and then she's a teenager and her relationship with her mother you know and 
the intricacies of you know our mother daughter relationship again is so beautifully shown like the fights that they have how she's always looking for her mother's approval but her mother is a working class woman so she's she doesn't have the time for emotions right and she just feels so misunderstood the whole exactly. movie exactly and you're just watching it and you're like oh my god like get over yourself and at the same time relating so hard to it the exactly. whole time you're like I know I was this like teenager who was like rebel, like one full on rebel without a cause, and so like. You uh, remember intense. that scene? Uh, there's this, there's this such a good scene where they're fighting in the car. Her mother's driving. Oh my god! And she just and, jumps out. And she just <laughs> jumps out. <laughs> oh my god! And uh, Timothy Chalamet plays the perfect. Uh, I mean, sorry to use this word, but this is a common word now. I mean, better get with the program, people. Uh, it's called fuck boy. So he's like the, he's like the perfect fuck boy, you know, that she kind of falls for and then falls out of love with, right? Yeah. It's very nice. And Rahil, you saw it with your mom. You told me I did That's because so nice. I think for me, uh, Lady Bird was that mother daughter relationship, like that defined the movie for me, and I related so hard to it. Uh, so my mom and I watched it together, and she loved it just as much as I did. Uh, so good. yeah, great recommendation. Love Lady Bird. All right, shall we get to our listeners recommendations Let's now? Let's do our listeners recommendations. The first one I'm really excited about Snigdha. Mm-hmm. Atish Diore, one of our listeners from Nasik. I'm terribly sorry if I've mispronounced your last name, Atish. He has a great recommendation for us. He's recommended a Marathi author and playwright called PL Deshpande. And I have Ooh. to admit I was not familiar with his work. Yeah. Uh but Please listen to Atish uh, and I'm sure he will inspire you to look up PL Deshpande's work just as much as he inspired us to. Hello people at the Ken. Uh, so my recommendations are from this Marathi playwright and author called PL Deshpande or as we like to call him Pula. Uh, he's known for his satire and social commentary. He's quite well known in uh, Maharashtra actually. Uh, his most notable work would be Vyakti and Valli, Ti Fularani and Batadachi uh, Sar. There are these two adaptation, adaptations of his short stories which I really like, uh, Dunya Dari and Ashi Banwa Banvi. You guys should check it out. All right. And uh, thank you for that recommendation, Atish. I'm definitely going to... I hope there are good translations because, you know, one of the biggest reasons... Uh, one of my biggest actually gripes with the publishing industry in India is like how we don't have good translations of regional writing, you know, in English. I yeah, you know, but I've read some great translations also. Yeah. Yeah, I've read some really good. Tra- I think we should save this for a daybreak unwind episode. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay. <laughs> okay. More <laughs> on that. Stay tuned. <laughs> okay, our next recommendation is Shibangi from New Delhi, and I love her recommendation. I'm obsessed with this show. Hi, I'm Shibangi, and my recommendation for the theme coming of age is this funny, heartwarming, and brilliant show called The Terry Girls. It follows a group of five friends as they grow up in Derry in Northern Ireland in the backdrop of a conflict called the Troubles. The show does a fantastic job on focusing on friendship, growing up and what it means to be a teenager. I think despite the grim context, the show is actually quite lighthearted, feel good and an absolute delight to watch over a weekend. Okay, we got one international recommendation, Snigta. Bridges oh, really? from Toronto has sent in his recommendation and he recommends Where the Crawdads Sing. <gasps> oh my God. Another Love very it. beautiful movie. It's Just based on a book, right? Book. Yeah, but it's yeah. based on a book. Uh, there's a film as well. Uh, have you seen the film and read the book? or have you? I have only seen the film. I've not it's, read the book. Yeah, it's beautiful. A great recommendation, Bridges. And that brings us to the end of the episode and this segment. Uh, we will finish off with our theme for next week, which as many of you may have already guessed, it's your favorite translated novel. This time we're just doing books, okay? No more, no, no movies, no TV shows, only books. Only books, but any language so it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, an Indian translation in an Indian language uh, but that we'd really enjoy that it could yeah. also be an in, you know a novel from abroad by a foreign writer we would love that too yes 
All right, that's a wrap. That's a wrap.